My artistry is renowned for how bad it is, so just hang with me. Okay. What those set of numbers generate, that 9881, we're going right until we hit this line, and then up until we hit this line. That tells us we're talking about this grid square. Okay, not this one, this one, or this one, but this one. So it's 9881. Okay, now we're starting the bottom left corner, and we're going to read to our target zone, which is right here. We're going to read how far over, how far up. Again, right and up to get to that. And for that, we need a little tool. And the tool is called a protractor. Now, these are used for military application because this is all the compass direction. You know, the, the compass laid out on a grid square. So this is, true, this is north, double zero, and right next to it is 360. So this is you know, 90 degrees, 180, 270, etc. Inside of it, there's three cutout squares. The little one is for 1 to 100,000 maps. The big one is for 1 to 25,000 maps. And this one is 1 to 50,000 maps. And, if I can get in a little closer, you'll notice it's been divided up into 10 evenly spaced vertical and horizontal markings. Now, what that is in reality is it's marking every hundred meters. And there's a tick mark between it. So it's between two and three. There's a tick mark marking two and a half. So it's one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four. Think of that as 50 yard groups. It's actually 50 meter groups. So it's a hundred meter grid divided up a little smaller in between. What we're going to do is, and why we write this number this way with these spaces is when we use our protractor if we automatically just read it da 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 writing up da 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 we're on target okay now let me show you how this is going to work those map coordinates bring us to the bottom left corner of this particular square that's what these numbers have told us now we need to find out where this target is on the square and that's where the protractor comes in because what we're going to do is we're going to lay the protractor make sure we can read the words in the right way and we're going to lay it up there in that corner slide it to the right until we see our target so the bottom of the protractor square is on that bottom line and then we're going to read vertically up to our target. In this case, it is 8575. Okay? So right is 85, and then up is 75. That is the map coordinate of my target. Because with this, I can tell that it's on my map, 9, 8, slide over to 8, 5, 8, 1, there's the bottom line, 7, 5, slide up to 8, 5. Again, reading right and up. So with this and this coordinate, I can mark it on my map from the information you gave me from your map. Okay? So this is the official map coordinate that you would hand me point out your camping site you want me to reach is 16 Romeo Echo Kilo 9885-8175. Sounds a little cryptic, don't it? Yeah, it can be. Now, suppose you got a big major landmark up here in this grid square, and it's the only thing like that in that grid square. Let's say a radio tower. Well, for me to give it to you, all I got to do is those first two set of numbers which is the map information in find that grid square 9881 radio tower 9881 oh there's the radio tower that's quick for something that's not marked i have to generate the other two four numbers to make it more precise now what this protractor also lets you know is how to measure a little bit of distance because remember this grid is in 100 meter actually 50 meter literally 
markings. So if I put the corner on my target, I can measure up and see that it's 600 meters from my starting point to my ending point. Or that this is that campsite right there by laying it up diagonally and putting one on one end of that grid and the other I see it's 650 meters to that railroad track over there. I can now put real distance in the short term with this. Now, I know this is very cryptic and this is very brief. There are tons, tons of videos on YouTube on how to read map coordinates, how to generate a lot more in depth than this. But for our day to day navigation, all that we need to know is where we're going and how to get back. When we're speaking land nav, we're trying to record a point on this map in a universal language that I can use, I can hand off to you, and that you can communicate in some way or retain it. Now quite often on my map, where this method becomes very handy, is I will write down on my maps. Now like I've said, I have two maps. As you see here, um, I have two copies of this same map. This map is the same as this map, identical. A lot of times when I buy a map, I buy two. This one is my field map. This is the one I actually take with me when I go out there. And let us say that in my camping, I have discovered a really good site over here that I want to document. I read the coordinates, mark it down, and then down here in the margin area, I draw a box and I write out those coordinates for me. So it's, you know, I'll write Echo Kilo da da da, and out beside it I'll put Hunting Camp 4 or uh, Campsite Waterfall. Something that's going to mentally be a reference to me. Now, when I get home, because I'm going to do all this with pencil out in the field, when I get home and I determine I really, really want to remember this, I'll take my master map and down here in the margin I will mark it and then I'll get up here on my map and I'll put a little mark where it's actually at and then out beside it I'll say like number one, number two, number three and so when I list it down here number one hunting camp, number two fishing place, number three old homestead, number four cave, number five big sinkhole things like that I can go number five and there's the coordinates I can look up and find number five on my map I don't have to draw any roots just put a mark and put like a number 29 or number 3, whatever I'm coordinating to my information I'm putting on my map down here. And that becomes a permanent marker. Why do I want to do this? Well, I might not be coming back here for a while. Um, it might be two years before I get an opportunity to come here. A lot of times we do uh, camp out some things where we go hike trails and stuff like that in North Alabama and other places where I might not come back for two years. I want to have a record in case my memory is a little off. Because I'll, I'll basically remember it, but write it down. It'll make your life so much easier. Me and some friends one time went to Tennessee to a place and found this wonderful cave, a rock shelter. And we camped in it and we had a great time. And four years later we decided to go back. And we spent two days hunting that rock shelter. We were sure when we got out of the tra got off on the trailhead, it was about a mile and a half down on the left. And we went a mile and a half down on the left and could not find it for nothing. It was actually five miles the other way. It was because we didn't mark it and our memory was not what it, we thought it should be. I hope this helps you guys. Please leave any questions and comments in the uh, comment box. I'm Blackie for Shamans Forge Bushcraft. Wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.